Okay, this is the second video that goes with the exponential derivatives lab. I promised you I'd chunk it up for you so you wouldn't have to sit down for so long, but you can look at what you need. So this is number 30. It said a certain pieces of antique furniture increased very rapidly in price in the 70s and 80s. For example, the value of a particular rocking chair is well approximated by the value, okay, equals 75, 1.35 to the T where V is the value in dollars, so please make sure you do this in your spiral notebook, but I'm gonna label the crap out of it. And T is a number of years since 1975. So this is in years, and then 1975 must be when time is zero. This is find the rate in dollars per year in which the price is increasing. Again, if it says find the rate, then that means we're gonna do um, the first derivative. Now I'm gonna write this one a little bit different. It is V prime, but we also could write it as DVDT. And they basically want us to tell us what that would be. Well, again, it's an exponential function, so you're going to rewrite the function with the coefficient, and then you're going to natural log the base. That's the derivative right there. Then I can plug in any time to find the rate, and you just got to make sure that when I do that and plug that in, what is my units? Well, the units of this is going to be in dollars per year. So. Anytime I throw in a time in this formula, then it's going to tell me in dollars per year um, what the rate is. Sometimes you'll see people take in and multiply these two together to come up with something, or they'll put the LN 1.5. So sometimes you'll see it written as well like this, where you'll see 75 natural log of 1.35. They put them all in front, 1.35 to the T. Um, that, that's fine as well. That's a short one. Now let's go to number 31, okay? It says the value of a certain automobile purchased in 1997 can be approximated by this function, V of T equals 25, 0.85 to the T, where T is in years, so this is in years, from the date of purchase. So this is gonna be time is zero as a 1975, 1997, excuse me, so this is in 1997. And V is a value in thousands of dollars. This is important, thousands of dollars. So um, sometimes when I do these, you have to be really careful that you watch what the units are because then when I do the derivative, I want to make sure that I'm answering it the way they want it, okay? So um, let's go through and do each one of these. I'm going to do it right on here, but you're going to need to do this. Evaluate and interpret via 4. So if I put V of 4 right in the formula that I have, I have 25, 0 0.85 to the 4th, and I plug that in there, I get, remember this is in thousands of dollars, okay, roughly $13,050, okay, and that's what that is, is when I put 4 in there, that tells me what the value was four years after I purchased it. And you can tell this is an exponential formula because it started at 25,000 and it's decreasing 15% per year, okay? Um, that's what that means. So I know it was gonna be less. Now for B, it says find the expression for V prime of T in, in, including units, all right? So I know V prime of T, it's exponential, is going to be rewrite the function including our, oops, sorry, my, there we go. Sorry about that. Rewrite the function, natural log the base. So there is my derivative function. What are the units when I do this one? Well, it's going to be in, and this is important, thousands of dollars per year. Okay, so that's my unit. Now they want me to plug in V prime of four. So they want me to put a four in there. So I'm going to, let's see, let's see if they got some room down here. Yes, I do. So I'm gonna do it down here for C. V prime of four is going to be 25, 0 0.85 to the fourth natural log of 0.85. And when I put that in my cal calculator, I get negative. 2.121. And remember, this is in thousands of dollars. So if I wanted to move it over, it'd be 2,000, negative $2,121, okay, per year.
So this value is dropping that much in the fourth year. And what is the fourth year? If it's 1997, we can write a sentence saying, okay, from the fourth to the fifth year, the value decreased 2,121. And I know the fourth year is 2001. So you can say from 2001 to 2002, the value dropped $2,121 per year. So make sure you put that in there. Now for D, it says use V of T, V prime of T, T, and any other considerations you think are relevant to write a paragraph in support or opposition to the following statement. From a monetary point of view, it is best to keep this vehicle as long as possible. Well, again, this is your viewpoint. And in class, I talked about um, of depreciating assets and whatever. And basically, as we go on, and if you were to look at this in graph, it, you'd notice that the bulk of the depreciation happens at the initial onset because the value is more. And then it's still decreasing, but it's less each year. So you could say, yes, it is best to keep it as long as possible because, first of all, you wouldn't have a car loan, hopefully, and then your value is decreasing less each year. Or you could say, I mean, there's a lot of ways to answer that, but um, that is just a personal preference, and I want you to look at what your um, values are doing. So let's look at 32, okay? 32 is pretty cool, and I actually graphed this one. Um, I don't have it up right now, so we'll just kind of go through this. It says, find the slope of the graph 1 minus e to the x at the point where it crosses the x-axis. So let's just put this. The x-axis is a number 0. Okay, and I know that the y value is zero, and it says find the slope of the graph. Well, I know the slope is going to be, I, I'm going to have to do f prime of x. Okay, so I have f of x, I'm just kind of going slow here, is one minus, 1 minus e to the x. And I know it crosses the x-axis as a point zero, so I want to know what the x value would be, okay? So if I actually put this equal to 0, 1 minus e to the x equals 0, and then I solve for this, so e to the x is going to equal 1. If I natural log both sides, natural log of e is 1. So I have x equals the natural log of 1 or x equals 0. So we're talking about the point 0, 0, okay? So that I know that. Now it says, uh, find the slope of the graph at the point. So I actually have to, for A, we're still doing A, I'm going to do F prime of X. So F prime of X is going to be, well, the derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of E to the X is E to the X. So it's still, don't forget the negative sign, is still negative E to the X. So if I now know the X is 0, because we just found it, I'm going to do F prime of 0 and find out what the slope would be and that would be negative 1. So the slope at 0, 0 is negative 1. You can graph and check these, but that would be the answer to A. It says find the equation of the tangent line. Well, that's always fun. I love doing the equation of the tangent line. So I do y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. And so I'm going to plug in the point uh, 0, 0, because that's what they gave us in this spot and this spot. And I'm going to plug a negative 1 here. So I have y minus 0 equals negative 1 times x minus 0. So when I get all done here, I find that the equation is going to be y equals negative x is my equation of the tangent line. Then they said, find the equation of the line perpendicular to the tangent line at this point. Well, perpendicular means the slope is the negative reciprocal. Okay. And we know that the slope is negative 1. So if I flip negative 1 and change the sign, my new slope is going to be a positive 1. So I'm just going to use the same equation, y minus y1, my tangent line, line m x minus x1, put in 0, 0, and put a 1 here. So I have y minus 0 equals 1 times x minus 0. So I get the line y equals x. Okay, so we've answered 32. I fit it in there. It's amazing, amazing, amazing. Amazing. 
And I think I'm going to do number 33 on another video. So I'm going to stop this so I don't make them too long. And I'm going to do number 33 on another video.